Welcome ladies and gentlemen to the 10th round of the 2020 NASCAR GT Cup Series season. And tonight we will have to get out our umbrellas for a very stormy race here at the Red Bull Ring. This gorgeous circuit located in the Austrian countryside opened in 1969 and has since famously played host to many Formula 1 Grand Prix. Tonight the NASCAR GT Cup Series will pay a visit and we'll see if championship points leader Trent Krentz can rebound after a poor finish last week at Northern Isle of 9th place. Meanwhile, second in championship Pac-Man will start on pole position and will try to close the gap to the championship lead further. The Red Bull ring starts off with a tight right-handed turn one, followed by a long straight that winds uphill into a sharp right-handed hairpin of turn two. Another long back straightaway will lead drivers into the understeery turn three, which is found at the bottom of a hill, so braking is key. The track will then loop back around with a set of double left-handers, leading its way into a left-right S section which will wiggle the track back through the Austrian forest. Two fast downhill right-handed turns will then take drivers back down the main straight to end the lap. How will these drivers handle the rain and what implications might these treacherous conditions have on the championship fight? We will find out in just a few minutes. On pole position tonight at the Red Bull ring is Pac-Man 302 in the Toyota FT1. Pac-Man is second in the championship last week at his first finish off the podium. So again, his streak of woe continues in this championship. Tonight, however, his first career pole and will look to maintain that P1 all night and take home, finally, that fourth victory of the year. Second place on the grid is Trent Krentz, looking to return to form after a dismal ninth place finish last week at Northern Isle. He won five in a row and then capped that off with a really low ninth place finish, the worst of the season last week at the Oval Circuit, but tonight returning to his pedigree of road course racing. We'll see if he can bounce back if the championship leader can win tonight. JRB starts third, I believe. Aside from his pole position at Blue Moon Bay, the highest he has started on the grid this season. He had a very solid performance last week, taking home his second podium of the year with a third place. So we'll see if he can maybe take home a third tonight. Third in the championship, Bill Baldwin starts fourth on the grid in the Toyota FT1. Bill Baldwin, Looked like the car to beat last week, but he came up just short with the second place again. Yet to win a race this season. He's just in the championship fight, but he's really got to start getting some wins on the stat sheet. We welcome Chris Ryan back after a two-week hiatus in the Chevy Corvette. He will start fifth on the grid. After missing two weeks, we'll see if he can return without any rust and bring home a solid finish in that Corvette. Percussive will start six last week. Another fifth place has been in the top five all but one race this year. A very impressive, solid season for the Toyota driver. And we'll see if he can finally track down that first podium of the season. Jordan Green will make his second start of the season. His first start came several weeks ago at Japan where he brought home a seventh place. This week he is in the Volkswagen Beetle. First time we'll see that all year. And from 7th on the grid, we'll see what the German manufacturer can give Jordan Green to work with. Last week's underdog winner, Jesse Carlson, won last week for his first career win at Northern Isle. Starting way down the order, though, in 8th place here in Austria. The rain may be giving him a little bit too much to handle. We'll see if he can fight back up through the field in the top 5. Thomas Geyer starts ninth in the Ford Mustang. Tom has had a pretty solid season, still trying to hunt down some more top fives and we'll see if he can get one here tonight. Rob Lohman Sr. starting 10th in the Chevy Corvette last week finished last place after wrecking early on. We'll see if he can rebound with a solid finish tonight. Cameron Norton in the last Corvette on the grid will start 11th. He's also had a pretty rough season and we'll see if he can finally get some momentum as we reach the latter end of the year. Ataxia starts 12th. Ataxia has had a very quiet yet very solid start to his uh, NASCAR GT Cup Series career. Last week, though, his first finish outside the top 10 took home a lowly 11th place. We'll see if he can rebound here at the Red Bull ring and get back inside the top 10. With the starting order out of the way, let's get down to the green flag at the Red Bull ring. For the first time in his NASCAR GT Cup Series career, Pac-Man will lead the field to green. This time it'll be in the rain. Get the umbrellas out because we are underway at the Red Bull ring. Got to be so careful in these conditions, especially in a turn one when the tires are cold. So easy to outbreak yourself in these conditions. Turns one and two, probably the hardest braking zones on the track. Turn three, 
about the same. So the first three corners is going to definitely have to get the temperature in the brakes and in the tires to make sure you stay on the circuit. Because if there's any part of the race that you don't want to mess up, it's lap one where everybody can just blow by you. Up the hill, Bill Baldwin taking a peek to the inside of JRB. Won't go for the move, though. So easy on throttle as they head up the hill and down the back straightaway. Absolutely treacherous spray as they head along this straightaway. Wouldn't be surprised to see a lot of guys peek out of line tonight just to be able to see in front of them because that miss that these cars are kicking up is bad. You see here the top two really breaking away as JRB, big tank slapper there at the bottom of the hill, is starting to have a choo-choo train form up behind him. And Pac-Man and Trent Krentz are pulling away already just about half a lap into the event. You see drivers running all sorts of lines along this basically skating rink of a racetrack. Until some laps get put down, this track is going to be wet. Once these guys start running a set line, then a dry line will start to form. But you don't want that line to get too dry because then your tires overheat. The rain is in the forecast for the entirety of this race, so it is here to stay. So we will see them on the wet tires all night, but you definitely don't want to make too much of a dry line because that could definitely be problematic for these wet tires. See here, the top two breaking away early on, just a lap into the event, two minutes for one lap. JRB in the newly branded Patronus Toyota FT1 has the train forming behind him with Bill Baldwin in the I believe Breast Cancer Awareness 21 Toyota. Great cause to see in that car there. Up the hill. And runs wide at the top of the hill. Bill Baldwin runs off course. Looks like he'll stay in fourth though. But Chris Ryan is going to go on the attack at the bottom of the hill, I'm sure. Bill Baldwin under attack from Chris Ryan for P4. Chris has the advantage as they head into turn three. Long sweeping downhill under Siri turn three. And in the rain, that's going to be tricky. And Chris Ryan's going to clear Bill into the braking zone. Can Chris maintain the line? No, Chris. Big Tank Slamper is going to spin to the inside wall. And it looks like up ahead, Jesse Carlson has got around Bill for fourth. Bill got held up by the spinning Chris Ryan. And now here comes Percussive attacking Bill for P5 now. What a sequence of events. Chris Ryan, welcome back to the series. Spun out to the inside wall of turn three while making a move for P4. Bill Baldwin had to check up so that he didn't hit Chris, and that sends Bill from fourth to fifth, which is ultimately where he probably would have ended up anyway. But Jesse Carlson goes from sixth to fourth through all of it. So, a lot of action in the midfield there on lap two. Back up front, Pacman still leads Trent and Krentz, and last we checked, the gap, I believe, was a little smaller. So good news for Pacman there. Trenton obviously not going to let him get away too easy, though. New paint scheme on Trent and Krentz's car as well. We usually see the purplish blue this time. Full on Corona. No sense of irony there. Up into turn two. Turn three, depending on the way you look at it. I don't count this little left-hander as turn two. So I count this tight. Hard right uphill hairpin as turn two. No move there from Trent Krentz. It was a little too far back. You see Trent's back end kick out just a little bit. And even just ahead of him, Pac-Man was wiggling on throttle. You cannot, you got to be so patient. So patient getting back to 100% throttle in these wet conditions. You could be halfway down a straightaway and still only about 80% throttle just to make sure that the car keeps going forward. You see there on exit Pac-Man with a big tank slapper. All over the track, trying to find the least wet line, but at the same time, the line that'll allow the, the tires to do their job correctly. You gotta find that balance. Through that sector, I do believe Pac-Man pulled even further from Trenton. JRB running a very lonely third behind them. Jesse Carlson fourth, Bill Baldwin fifth. Percussive has dropped off from that little duo. He runs sixth. Chris Ryan 
Will maintain seventh. Kind of in a land of his own right now. Jordan Green, eighth. Going off track there, just off camera. You see him back there in the gravel trap in front of Cameron Norton, who's made his way up to ninth, drifting through the S's. Those two will hold each other up. That is eighth and ninth place. Cameron Norton goes around the outside of Jordan Green, who wins the gravel trap. Here's Thomas Gayer running 10th. Looks like he just had some trouble. Ataxia way off track. Looks like he's going to drop out of the race, as a matter of fact. And that'll move, I believe, Rob Lohman Sr. up to 11th. He's in the gravel trap as well. So a lot of guys having a lot of trouble keeping the car on the track. Up the hill, Trenton has definitely closed back up to Pac-Man while we were running through the field. And we see here, Trenton pushes too hard. He's going to... No, he just saves it. But that was nearly a full spin into the inside wall. I was about to say, if he could get a good exit there, he could definitely have a shot into turn three. And he wanted that good exit, wanted it just a little too much in these conditions. And like I just said a lap earlier, you got to be so patient on throttle. Trenton just wasn't patient enough and nearly sent him to the inside wall. Luckily, kept the car probably about 85 degrees rather than 180. So that'll keep him in second, but far off from first now. But anything can happen in these conditions and over the course of 53 minutes and 12 seconds. The Pac-Man right now looking very unfazed by the conditions. But in the in in rain, racing in the rain, one mess up can just lead to calamity. Regardless, Pac-Man will lead as he comes across the line to start lap five. After he exits this final corner, nice tank slapper there. And that's what I mean. He has all these guys are getting tank slappers out of almost any corner. It just takes a little too late of a reaction to send you into the wall. Bill Baldwin's gotten back around Jesse Carlson. They're coming across the line to start lap five. Bill got around Jesse at some point, I believe in the last lap, but Jesse's not going to let him get away. These two guys battled for the win last week at Northern Isle. Jesse getting the better of it, and Bill still searching for that first win in 2020. Right now, all the way back to fourth. He's the only driver all season to be on the podium every race, which is quite a stat and the only reason really he's still in the championship fight. But he's got to start knocking on those wins. But right now, running all the way back and forth, quite a way behind the guys in front, that podium just starting to slip away in the rain. Under attack here down the back straight here from Jesse Carlson. Jesse knows better than to go for a move here but is ready to pounce should Bill mess up. And big drift into the turn there by Bill. Percussive not too far behind these guys. And he's there to pounce if both of them mess up. You just see through every corner, these guys run in different lines. And that's probably everybody fighting the car differently and maybe just trying to carry the momentum differently in the rain. And like I mentioned, I believe on lap one, you don't really want to run directly in the spray of the guy in front. Because if you follow him and you're in that spray, you can't see where they're going and you might follow him off, off the track. Looks like Bill has pulled quite a bit from Jesse on this lap. Bill might be putting his head down and just trying to catch up to JRB, but big tank slapper there by Bill Baldwin. Go to the final set of corners. It is a matter of milliseconds between keeping the car going the right way and facing the wrong way. On the lap six, these guys running a little less than two, two minute lap times. The polar opposite of Northern Isle. Definitely a change in pace over the last two weeks. And next week, taking on the absolutely magnificent Mount Panorama circuit in Australia. That's yet another polar opposite. Humongous circuit with many twists and turns. And then week after that is the Nordschleife, even bigger track back in Germany, which we were at two weeks ago. So definitely hitting a very fun 
stretch of races in this season. Just a little bit past halfway now through the calendar. And the tracks are just getting more fun every week. Up front, man having the most fun of anybody is Pac-Man. Running away with this lead from Trent Krentz. But Trent, I think, as a matter of fact, might have closed up just a little bit since he made that mistake. He definitely hasn't let Pac-Man get away. But just visually, I do think he might have closed up a little bit. So, of course, Trent Krentz not making anything easy for his competitors, especially his championship competitors. These two, one and two in the championship. Trading off win streaks. And for the first time last week, it was neither of these drivers on the top step of the podium. Pac Man won the first three races, and Trenton won the next five. And then finally, we had a new winner last week with Jesse Carlson at Northern Isle. But right now, looking like it's going to be one of these two yet again. Back up front, I saw on the track map, it looked like somebody made a mistake, and I believe it to be percussive. He was running six, but now he's dropped back to seven, just behind Chris Ryan. So percussive might be struggling in these conditions. There's Rob Lowman Sr. off the track, a lap down now in the Chevy Corvette. Going through turn three, look how slow these guys have to go. Chris Ryan, I think, might have just held up percussive quite a bit. Just in front of them, though, is Jesse Carlson. Fourth? All the way back to seventh. Actually, no. JRB really struggling there through turn three. Third back to seventh, as a matter of fact. Very close together. There you see there, JRB running third. Bill Baldwin just in the background in fourth. Jesse Carlson coming around that set of corners with Chris Ryan and Percussive behind him. So through, third through seventh is quite a race. Obviously, a little gap between Bill and Jesse. but gaps so far have proved to mean nothing with how much these guys have been struggling in, these, in this uh, rainy night here in Austria. See three cars there. Really nice camera shot. Another nice one there. You see the rain kicking up, fogging up these windshields. And given these GT Cup Series drivers... A car to manhandle. Really have to, having to wheel it around all these corners. Be so patient on the throttle. See there, JRB definitely got away with a corner cut there in turn one. Easily could have been given a time penalty, but luckily for him, is not. And he is feeling the pressure of Bill Baldwin behind him. Up into turn three. This battle has closed up Bill really on the attack of his fellow Toyota FT1 driver. Bill started third and dropped back a little bit. Uh, fell as far back as fifth at one point. But has fought his way back up and now in a battle for a podium spot. Again, drifting into turn three at the bottom of the hill. Just really pushing into that braking zone. In the rain, the line between racing clean and spinning out is so thin. And if these guys keep pushing it into turn three, like we've seen them do lap after lap, just basically drifting into that corner, it's going to go awry one, one lap or another. Look at them slide through the S's there at the back end of the circuit. JRB really sideways there on exit. Just keeps the car facing the right way. But it's those little mistakes that add up. And then a driver can get frustrated with all those mistakes and then start pushing to make up that lost time. And then they lose even more time by hitting the wall. Familiar scenery with a top four consisting of just Toyotas. Last week the Toyotas didn't run so hot. But they are back up front here in Austria. Fifteen minutes in, and this battle for the lead is also closed back up here. As Trent Krentz has 
definitely close up to Pac-Man, but just as we tuned into this battle um, just a second ago, Trenton had a big Tink Slapper through turn three, and looks like he lost some time again. And he's right back to square one. Through turn three, just looking at it, it looked like they were a lot more cautious than we've seen Bill Baldwin through laps past, so definitely different driving styles here in the rain. Do you run right on the edge or, and risk spinning out? Or do you run a little more cautious and be a little slower? But, of course, more cautious, less risk of getting in an accident. There's Cameron Norton in ninth place going a lap down for the first time today. We've had another car drop out. Let me run through the order real quick to see who that might have been. And I believe it was Chris Ryan, not Chris Ryan, sorry, Thomas Geyer who has dropped out in the Ford Mustang. Uh, looking at the time sheets, yes, he is not on track anymore. So we've had Ataxia and Thomas Geyer both drop out of the event. Less than 10 laps in. Man who's led all 10 laps here in the number 19 Mountain Dew Toyota FT1. Leading the way just in front of his championship con competitor, Trent Krentz, up the hill. And Trent is right on his back bumper now. Down the back straightaway, Trent Krentz filling up the rear view mirror of Pac-Man. Really sends it into turn three, washes up a little bit. But looks like Pac-Man ran just as wide. So it won't really cost Trenton too much. He's going to stay right on him. Trenton running way off track there. He's in the gravel. That's going to cost him some time. Runs off track, heading into turn four. Hits the gravel trap. And he's going to lose all that time he's gained over the last couple laps. This to be so frustrating. Back behind them. Going through turn four now. JRB and Bill Baldwin. Bill has just sat behind JRB over the last few laps. You saw at the top of your screen there, Bill Baldwin. Big tank slapper in between those two left-handers. We'll see if Bill can close up enough to go for a move. I believe he was a little bit closer earlier when we last watched this battle, but maybe has dropped back a little bit. If not, it's at least stayed the same, but I don't think Bill has closed up since we last checked. So maybe just running patient. Rain tires in racing typically last longer, so I'm wondering if... I'm wondering what the strategy might be in this event. I have no idea, so I'm just waiting to see if anybody dives in at any point. As we just hit a little bit more than a quarter of way into the event. No pit stops yet, of course. But should there be some, I will be the first to let you all know. But I wouldn't be too surprised if they're able to go, if not one stop, if they can just go all the way. Of course, though, fuel... Could be a factor, so they might have to pit for fuel. It'll be interesting to see as this event goes on. Trent Krentz heads through turn four as... Or, sorry, Pac-Man heads through turn four as Trent Krentz exits turn three. So that is the gap. Definitely the biggest it's been. And Pac-Man can just worry about his own about his own line, his own race, and definitely not have to worry about this man behind him anymore. That is, of course, unless Trenton Krentz catches up again. He did it once, I'm sure he could do it again. We know his competitive spirit and how hard he pushes every week. So he's definitely gonna put his head down and try to close up to Pac-Man again for the race lead. Here's JRB and Bill Baldwin again. Bill looks a lot closer than he's been in the last few laps. 
And just as I was talking about pit stops, they are going to come in here on lap 11. So JRB and Bill Baldwin, third and fourth, both come into the pit stops here on lap 11, about 20 minutes in. Jesse Carlson is going to stay out. So with some basic math, I can tell you it's going to be a two-stop race on these wet tires. Question is, how do the rest of the leaders play this strategy? Jesse Carlson, over the last few weeks, we've seen him pull off some very interesting strategies. Wouldn't it be surprised to see him try to pull another one again? Chris Ryan running in fourth in the other Corvette. He will not pass the two who pit. JRB comes out just in front of Bill. But on cold tires, Bill, the smart idea would be to not really attack and just stay with JRB. Because those tires, especially in the rain, are going to be like driving on ice. So this will be a real test of Bill's patience here on this outlap. Back up to the leader, Pac-Man, in the number 19 Toyota. We'll see if he comes in this lap. He will stay out here on lap 12. Would be very, very fun to see uh, if maybe some guys try a one-stopper compared to two stops. Uh, any racing fan loves an alternate, alternative strategy race. It always makes it more interesting than just what's going on on track always gives us some exciting finishes. There's Jesse Carlson running third on track. Net P5. He's got a half a second penalty. And he's way off track there in the gravel. Ran very wide of the S. Almost looked like he did that intentionally, but there's no way he would have. And now he's going to probably drop behind Chris Ryan if he can't get back up to speed. Je that's Jesse Carlson running net P5, but was running third on track. He's going to stay out for another lap. Ran very wide. Out of what is that? Turn seven, the second of the second turn in the S section of the back back end of the circuit. Hit the gravel, came almost to a complete stop, and now he's got Chris Ryan right behind him, going on the attack. And now out of turn one, Jesse off into the painted runoff area. And Jesse struggling over this last half a lap. This is last week's race winner. Trying to keep that momentum, but right now has zero momentum. Back up front, Pac-Man. Coming up to the pit entry yet again. We'll see if he comes in. In just a second. There's his battle again for fifth and sixth. The two Corvette teammates who have given us more than a handful of good battles this season. Chris Ryan a little too far back to go for a move, but really breaking hard into turn three. Up front, uh, Pac-Man, and I believe, yes, Trent and Krentz have also stayed out. All these Corvette teammates go at it into the double left-hand section. Jesse Carlson into the runoff area on the entry. Back end kicks out, and Chris Ryan just sneaks on by. So Jesse Carlson in the last lap has gone from third on track to... Net P6 because Chris Ryan was P6 and now Jesse's behind him after making a number of mistakes over the last lap. Really fighting the car in the background. We'll see if he comes in. Could it be the tires just not being very friendly to him? Drives it hard in that corner. He's going to stay out. So last week's race winner at Northern Isle, Jesse Carlson really fighting that car and he is not winning that match. 48 Corvette not being very friendly to its driver. And we'll see if he can stay with Chris Ryan. Just up the road is this battle that is always ongoing. JRB versus Bill Baldwin for the final step on the podium. JRB's been just in front of Bill for the last at least 10 laps, I'd say. But Bill just hasn't been there to make a move. There, Bill. And a lot tighter of a line through turn two. But won't really close up to JRB. 
You see the gap there? It's relatively big. Bill probably not even getting any slipstream. That is the battle for third and fourth. Jeremy, two podiums on the year. And Bill Baldwin, through nine races, has nine podiums. Mr. Consistency all season has kept him just within reach of the championship lead, but has yet to lead that championship. That's actually a lie. He got the bonus point for pole position at the season opener at Willow Springs. So for a couple laps, he was the championship leader by just a single point. But since then, has not led the championship. Ran second, but not up front. Here we go. I do think that he got a better exit there out of the final corner compared to JRB. He's going to break very hard into turn one. Try to get a better exit out of turn one. And he is right there. Really pushed that final sector of the last lap. He's in the slipstream going up the hill. Bill Baldwin's going to take the peak to the inside. Is he too far back? I think he's too far back. I think he actually braked earlier. Could he be trying to force JRB into a mistake? Doesn't look like it. They both get pretty good exits. I think Bill might have got a little bit of a better one because of how early he braked. Bill not really tucking into that slipstream 100%. He's kind of peeking out just a little bit. I think he's trying to scare JRB into running wide. Make, make JRB think that he's going to go for the move. And have JRB outbreak himself. But so far, JRB keeping, keeping the car nice and steady. Again, through the double left-hander on lap 15. Two guys up front, Pacman and Trent Krentz, still yet to pit. It's been about eight minutes and about four or five laps since these two guys on screen made their pit stops. So maybe different strategies between everybody. Because if you can make it 30 minutes into the race, that's halfway. So you might as well just make it a one-stopper. And it looks like so far, these two guys are the only ones who might end up having to run two stops. So we'll see if that plays into their hands or not. Bill Baldwin, big tank slapper. Through turn one. Not even on exit, but through the corner. Was all over the road. And that's going to cost him a lot of time heading up the hill. He's going to have to put his head down and close that gap yet again. Back behind him, Chris Ryan has really pulled from Jesse Carlson. Jesse was filling up Chris's mirrors just a couple laps ago, but as we saw earlier, was really fighting that 48 car. So very easily could have had another problem, which knocked him out of sight of Chris Ryan. Percussive, a very lonely... Very uncharacteristic seventh place. The man who's been in the top five all but one race, running way back in seventh place all by himself. Has about half the racetrack to himself. By the way, Pac-Man, in case you missed it on the ticker, is in for his first stop. Trent Krentz is still staying out, however. So the two race leaders running different strategies. Here we see third and fourth again, nose to tail. Sliding all over the place to the left-hander. Bill Baldwin right on that back bumper again to JRB's Toyota. Bill should know better than to go for a move here into this fast right-hander. There's no way to pull off a clean move. And he will tuck back in. And this exit out of the final corner is so, so important for Bill if he wants to have a shot maybe into turn one, but he's just too far back. Lost a lot of time into that first right-hander and gave him no shot here into turn one. Good exit could set him up for turn two, though. We saw last lap. He was all over the road through turn one. Keeps it nice and steady this time. 
JRB, though, might have got another corner cut. Doesn't get a penalty. We saw him do that earlier. Bill, right on that back bumper, but I think he's too far back. Maybe about a car length between them as they head up the hill. Battle between third and fourth. Bill Baldwin takes the peak, but sneaks back into line. Bill gets a pretty good exit. He is going to be right on JRB's back bumper, right on that back spoiler. This is where we've seen most of the moves done into turn three, but Bill, I don't think he's going to go for it. No, he will not. Bill Baldwin remaining so patient in fourth place. Sliding their way through the infield section of the track. Trent Krentz, current race leader, second on track, or second, second place net position is in for his first stop. Uh, net race leader Pac-Man coming around the final corner now. They were pretty spread out when Pac-Man came in for his stop, so we'll see what the gap is when Trenton leaves his stop. Still getting filled up as Pac-Man heads into turn one. Looks like the gap is going to remain pretty large. Trenton just now left his box and is coming out of the pit exit. So about half this, almost the entire second straightaway between the two leaders. Back to the battle between third and fourth. Bill has dropped back yet again. See the gap there. Five, six, seven, maybe car lengths between the two. Lat this time, last lap, it was only one. So Bill has really dropped back again. And at what point does he say, screw it, I'm just going to go for the move? Because he's been close enough to go for an aggressive mood. M not mood, move. He's been close enough to go for an aggressive move, but he hasn't done one. But at some point, he's got to just go for it. Of course, we're only halfway into the race. So definitely could be a long time before we see Bill get that aggressive but he can't sit in fourth all day especially knowing that he's almost definitely faster than JRB in third Guys at the back end of the field, Cameron Norton and Rob Lemon Sr., both a couple laps down, all over the road, bringing out sector yellows wherever they go, really fighting their Corvettes. That is ninth and 10th, Cameron Norton and Rob Lemon Sr., respectively. We've had two guys drop out. Thomas Geyer and Ataxia both have dropped out of tonight's event. 11th and 12th no longer in the race. Here's Jordan Green in the Volkswagen Beetle, running an eighth. Very quiet, very lonely eighth place, but solid night to say the least. Jesse Carlson has really dropped off. These two, I think, Chris Ryan and Jesse Carlson have both made their pit stop. Percussive yet to make his, unless I missed something. But Percussive was a very distant seventh place, now running in fifth, just ahead of those two. Almost certain percussive is yet to pit while the other two have. And these three, every single week, and I say it every week, they are always going at it the entire race. Whether it be strategy that brings them together or just them racing each other hard. I'm not sure there hasn't been a week where you can get all three in a camera shot. And up front, Bill Baldwin has got around JRB. This is between third and fourth. Let's rewind a second just to see if we can see the move. It was into turn three. Bill closed the gap up the hill into turn three and went for the aggressive move. Pushed JRB a little bit wide at the top of the hill. Had it used the runoff. But Bill Baldwin finally gets the move done for third place and pulls ahead of JRB. It will drop back to fourth. I said it, Bill was going to have to get aggressive at some point, and he finally does it. 
just past 34 minutes into the event. Gap up to Trent Krentz for these two is, let's check, a whole 17.3 seconds. So, Bill is going to have to run some really, really good laps if he wants to catch up. Another man who's going to have to put down some really good laps if he wants to catch the guy in front. He's trying to crunch himself. But last lap, I think that's what that means on the timing, is that he just put down the best lap of the race. So he's doing what he needs to do if he wants to catch up to Pac-Man, but about a 10-second gap up to him. And with a little less than 2-minute lap times and 24 minutes left, <laughs> He'll have to really lap hard if he wants a shot to win this race. There's Bill Baldwin in third. You can see the gap has cl cl uh, grown quite a bit on JRB. So he is definitely pushing to pull away from that fourth place car and just cross his fingers to get any sort of hope to catch up to Trent Krentz. You see there a huge slide in the left-hander. Back behind, here's Chris Ryan making a move on Percussive. Again, I'm not sure Percussive's pit yet. I'm almost certain he hasn't, but there's Chris Ryan into turn three, making the move down the inside of the Toyota. A pretty, pretty easy job done for Chris. Jesse Carlson quite a way back from them. We'll see if he can catch up to the Toyota as well. Rob Lohman Sr. has dropped out of the race as well. He will settle for 10th place. And that leaves us just nine cars on track. Cameron Norton, last place of all the guys on track. There's a big tank slapper for Pac-Man. And that's out of turn three. Probably the hardest corner to remain patient uh, on the throttle because of just how slow it is and we've seen so many guys have trouble exiting that turn and Pac-Man huge tank slapper quarter of the way down the straightaway trying to remain patient back on the gas through the double left hander about Little, little more than halfway through the race. Just 22 minutes left now. Guys really spreading out at this point. Just trying to put down some laps and catch up to the cars around them. But nobody's really around anybody at this point. This is the closest battle on track here. Two guys on different strategies. Chris Ryan and Percussive. Now, I could be wrong. Percussive might have pit early on. Before uh, Chris and Jesse. And that's why... He was so far behind. I'm not too sure. I wish I had a way to check if he had pit already. But it's just on my memory, which is never very good. Chris Ryan in that 24 Corvette we saw, I believe it was just a lap ago, made that move on percussive and has really gapped the Toyota. And I think it's worth mentioning that Bill Baldwin and JRB pit about 20 minutes into this race. And almost 20 minutes have passed since that pit stop. So should they stick on that two-stop strategy, they will probably come in in this lap or the next. So we'll see what these third and fourth place runners do in terms of their strategy.
It has been a long wait for that fourth victory for Pac-Man. And he is within 20 minutes of finally securing a fourth gold trophy on the season. Came out this season guns blazing with three wins in a row, running away with the championship, but dating back uh, six weeks now. This is the seventh race since his last victory. He has finished no better than second. He had five podiums in a row while Trent Krentz took home all those victories. And then last week, his worst finish of the season of fourth, which for him probably hurt, but to anybody else, they'd be very happy to say that stat. But right now, nothing really giving him any trouble of securing that fourth victory on the year. By the way, while I was rambling on, Percussive made a pit stop, so now my theory is correct. Uh, percussive pit uh, around the same time that Bill Baldwin and JRB did. So Percussive on the two-stop strategy. While I really believe that Chris Ryan and Jesse are going to try to pull off one. So that will be the real test of the difference between two and three stops. And while I'm talking about that, here come Bill and JRB for their second stop of the day. Which is 19 minutes to go. So Percussive on a two-stop. Bill Baldwin, JRB. Also on two-stop strategies. And there's percussive big tank slapper on those cold tires. And there's Jesse Carlson off in the gravel. It's about to say he's likely pulling off a one-stop. But that's not really going to earn him anything if he can't keep the car facing the right way. Still struggling to get the car pointing in the right direction. Big tank slapper there through the left-hander. And Jesse all night, the reigning race winner, has just been fighting that Corvette again all over the curb. And just really having to fight that 48 Ally Chevy. And Percussive is not far behind him. And that's not good news for Jesse. Because Jesse obviously. Uh, Going to be on very old tires compared to Percussive. Who is on one lap new tires. So it'll be a, a really hard task for Jesse to keep Percussive behind him. Just behind Percussive is race leader Pac-Man, so that'll put six cars on the lead lap once Pac-Man gets around him. Of course, he he's getting blue flags, but he technically doesn't have to yield because his car does ghost. But we'll see if Percussive, what Percussive does about the fact that race leader Pac-Man is behind him. Jesse Carlson just up the road. So we will very soon have a battle for 6th and 7th on our hands. Chris Ryan quite a ways ahead of them in 5th. A really good race in his return after missing, missing the last two weeks. I'm sure he's very, very happy to be running in 5th. Here is third and fourth place Bill Baldwin and JRB who have made their second stops as well. And earlier I said Bill is going to put his head down and try to pull away from JRB, but JRB is not letting him get away whatsoever. It's about the same gap that we saw Bill constantly have up to JRB when Bill was in fourth. So could we see uh, a swapping of, of positions yet again between these two? I'm sure Bill is thinking, just go away, go away. But JRB wants that third podium on the season. JRB has not had a finish worse than fifth. He has a second, a third, two fourths, no, sorry, three fourths and a fifth. So he's missed three races, but easily could be just outside the championship battle if he had run the full season. Unfortunately, though, just a part-time schedule for the number 12 Toyota driver. But every week, he definitely performs. And right now, just in the tire tracks of third place Bill Baldwin looking for that. Bill looking for his 10th podium on the year in 10 races. JRB looking for his third. Up 
up front. Tran Krentz has closed the gap up to Pac-Man. So we could have a battle on our hands in this last 15 minutes for the race win. And that would definitely be something to see. Aside from the two oval races and Japan, really every race has kind of just been a runaway for the win. So it would be really nice to see a battle for the lead here at the road course in the final laps. There you see it. The whole double left-hander section is about the gap between these two. Last I checked, it was 10 seconds. It's now down to 4.4 uh, seconds between race leader Pac-Man and second place Trent Krentz. So the gap has certainly closed. Been more than cut in half between the two. So Trent really putting his head down. And going to try to fill up Pac-Man's rearview mirror. Cross the line to start lap 26. 46 minutes have gone by. Probably about seven or eight, maybe nine more laps for these guys. This battle for the lead will be something to watch. Third and fourth, pretty close to each other. Chris Ryan running all by himself in a very convincing P5. When I say all by himself, I mean all by himself. Jesse Carlson has just gone a lap down and very soon might have percussive on his back bumper percussive just pit a couple minutes ago jesse going all the way to the end after pitting already almost 17 minutes ago so in theory percussive on much fresher tires should be able to catch up to jesse but we will see but definitely could have some very exciting battles to the end of the race very important we have to check on is who has the fastest lap to this point and not very surprising it's Trenton Krentz who has the fastest lap and that will award him one bonus point one bonus point for pole position one bonus point for fastest lap in this series so I'm sure Trenton if he can't take the win he wants to have as many points possible so he wants that fastest lap at least but he has closed that gap yet another second down to 3.6, a little less than a second, but is continuously closing between first and second. One thing also to mention is uh, Cameron Norton has also dropped out of the race. He was ninth. And there you see Trent Krentz puts down another best lap out of anybody. So he is really pushing to catch up to the race leader. Now to just 3.3, .3, close three tenths of a second through just like two turns. Trent Krentz really pushing that car and it is working but in these conditions, he cannot push too hard or else it will be all for nothing. Another fastest sector one. He has to be so patient on the throttle at a turn two. That's where we saw him make that mistake early on where he nearly did a full spin. Just managed to hang on to the car. And could that save give him the opportunity to possibly win this race? Because it is far from over. And just as I say that, Trent Krentz has gone wide at the bottom of the hill in turn three. And that just might put the fork in this battle and call it done. Trent Krentz was pushing real hard. And in the rain, so easy to push too hard. And that might make him have to officially settle for P2. An absolute shame there for the championship leader who is definitely within three seconds at that point of Pac-Man, but just overdrove it into turn three, a track that we've seen that happen a number of times already this race. Hit the gravel trap. And the gap is probably 10 seconds at this point, 9.3 seconds. And with just 10 minutes to go, that's maybe five more laps. So he'll have to be about two seconds a lap faster than Pac-Man. I'm not saying it's impossible, but that is a miracle. Should Trent Krentz 
close the gap again. The last seven and a half seconds that lap compared to his best lap. But he is not one to surrender. So we will see if he can close up yet again. Here's that battle for third and fourth. And I swear the gap does not close nor open between these two. Bill Baldwin and JRB have been third and fourth basically all night. And I've been in each other's sight all night. We'll see if JRB can close the gap like, like Bill Baldwin did earlier. Bill was very aggressive in his move for third place. So we will see should JRB catch up if JRB gives him a taste of his own medicine. Less than 10 minutes to go here in Austria. A rainy day, which has supplied us with some very, very entertaining racing in the NASCAR GT Cup Series. Gap between Jesse Carlson and Percussive isn't closing nearly as much as I thought it should and thought it would. Uh, Jesse on about 15 minute older tires, which is about seven or eight laps. And also all night struggling to keep that car on track. I would have thought Percussive could easily catch up on the fresh tires, but he just really hasn't at all. Obviously, Jesse on a one-stop strategy, pitting halfway through the race, percussive, making it two stops, pitting every 20 minutes. So that's got to be frustrating for percussive to know that he probably should have caught Jesse by this point, but just hasn't closed up at all. You see Jesse there getting lapped by Trent for the second time, got his lap back from him when Trent and Krentz ran wide but going a lot down to him yet again. See in the background there, that is Jordan Green in the Volkswagen Beetle. It's had a very quiet yet very solid night here in the rainy night in Austria. Running eighth place and he can't finish any worse than eighth at this point as everybody behind him has dropped out of the event. But he's basically a full lap behind percussive so we'll probably just have to settle for that eighth place which is nothing really to complain about he had a better night than i believe five other guys and just to say that he hits that inside wall percussive of course the car in front almost a whole lap ahead of him he runs seven chesse carlson in sixth chris ryan runs fifth place jerby trying to chase down bill baldwin he runs fourth bill in third and Trent Krentz, who came so close to that race lead, fell off track. Trenton runs second. There's Pac-Man in first, who has led all but, I believe, just one lap, which was what, which was during the pit cycle. Less than seven minutes to go now here at the Red Bull Ring. And at first, it seemed not winning was uncharacteristic. But at this point, we got used to not seeing him on, on, on that top step of the podium, so now it's refreshing to see him back up front. Just about as refreshing as delicious can of Mountain Dew. One might say, should there be in a Mountain Dew advertisement. Thing I gotta wonder is Pac-Man, of course, is in the lead. But I mentioned earlier, Trent Krentz has the fastest lap. And nothing really all season has really stopped Trenton from getting fastest lap bonus point in almost any race. But you got to wonder, Pac-Man running second in the championship, um, does he try to push and get that fastest lap and risk messing up? Messing up? Is that worth? Is it worth the risk trying to get that one extra point? I mean, as they run, six points separate uh, Pac-Man... And Trent and Krentz. Trent and Krentz, obviously, championship lead. Pac-Man runs second. But as they stand with just five and a half minutes to go here in Austria, six points separate the top two. And another 14 back to Bill Baldwin. And really, realistically, those are the only three drivers who have 
a solid shot. Obviously, quite a number of races left. Uh, percussive, as they run, runs fourth in the standings. But he's a total of 40 behind Bill Baldwin and 60 points behind uh, championship leader Trenton Krentz. So if anybody behind Bill Baldwin wants to catch up, it would be a miracle. Jesse Carlson, just another two points behind Percussive as they run. Obviously, that can change should Percussive put down some banging laughs in this last five minutes. But Jesse, two points behind Percussive. So the battle for fourth and fifth in the championship, very, very close. Um, but then another 36 back to JRB. That is your top six in points. Rob Lemon Sr. in seventh, who's 15 behind JRB. And then Chris Ryan, eighth at 115. And that, mathematically, I believe, is everybody who can win the championship. Realistically, though, again, I say it's just that top three. Trent Krantz at 231 points, Pac Man 225, and Bill Baldwin 211. Realistically, I see them being the only three to have a shot. Bill Baldwin's been Mr. Consistency all year. As it stands, the only guy to be on the podium every race. With four minutes left, probably just two laps now. He's got JRB. Quite a gap behind him, but JRB definitely compounds should Bill run off the track. Which we've seen happen to almost everybody tonight. Pac-Man been on the podium all but one race. And within four minutes of winning his fourth race on the year, Trent Krentz has brought home five trophies this season and has been on the podium all but two races, which probably uncoincidentally were both oval races. Not his pedigree. He will tell you that, but of course, only two oval tracks on the calendar. And he has taken advantage of every other race. His worst finish on a road course was Belgium, where he finished third. And he definitely should have won that race. Made one mistake while leading by quite a gap and fell back to third. So realistically, realistically, his worst finish on a road course could easily be second. And that is very impressive. But I'm sure he is not impressed with the second place. He's got to be very frustr frustrated with that mistake he made uh, just a couple laps ago was within three seconds for sure of race leader Pac-Man but just hit the gravel trap and just cost him eight seconds or so. And since then has tried to chase him down but just didn't have enough time and has thrown up the white flag and has just surrendered the race win to Pac-Man. Two and a half minutes to go. So Pac-Man more than likely on his penultimate lap. So when he t crosses the line this time around, he will start his final lap and will look to finally end that hunt for his fourth win on the year. And last time he won a race, he won two more after it. So once he wins, he gets in a groove. And we'll see if he can carry that sort of momentum again. Of course, next week, a very tricky track, Mount Panorama in Australia. Which is, you could probably almost call it a wild card race with how wild and treacherous that track is. So we will see if any sort of momentum can carry into it. Then the week after that's the Nordschleife. So if Pac-Man wants the three-peat again, it will be very impressive if he can get that done on those two tracks. Regardless, he got it done tonight. He's just got one more lap to complete. As there's just about a minute to go now. The number 19 Mountain Dew, Toyota FT1. Looking like it'll finally get back to the top step of the podium here in the NASCAR GT Cup Series. Wheeling his way around turn two. The track that caught so many off guard tonight. Down the back straightaway. Probably not even on full throttle till you're halfway down. Into turn three, the turn that probably solidified his win tonight. Pac-Man in the number 19 Mountain Dew Toyota. Into the infield section of the track. The double left-hander where 
We saw a couple guys go wide. Definitely saw a lot of alternating lines from drivers tonight through this section of the track. It was very interesting to see how different drivers handled the rain. Pac-Man handled it beautifully here in the rain. Calm the rain meister, if you will. Time has officially expired as he comes to the S section of the circuit. Two more corners to go. Back down the hill into the fast right-hander. So easy to push it too hard. But did not mess up one millimeter tonight. Pac-Man, after six frustrating weeks of giving up wins to Trent Krentz, Pac-Man will return to victory lane and to the top step of the podium in the NASCAR GT Cup Series with the win here in Austria. Trent Krentz now coming through the final two corners as well. Has to be frustrated. Knows that win was, was within reach. And we'll just have to look to rebound. He's going to have to... He's coming in through the pits. I'm not sure if that's just him being funny or if maybe he sincerely has to pit here on this last lap. But regardless, he will cross the line via the pit lane. He's definitely safe. And Trent Krentz will officially take that second place trophy. Bill Baldwin... Gave no mind to the pressure from JRB behind. He had to earn this third place, though. Did not come easy, but Bill Baldwin through the final two corners. Started third, fell back the order, but Bill Baldwin through the final corner is going to keep up his 10 race in a row podium streak with a third place finish. But has to be so refreshing to every week just fall a little bit behind the championship lead. JRB will cross the line. Podium just out of reach. But definitely a solid night again from JRB. Chris Ryan takes home fifth. Jesse Carlson sixth. And Percussive seventh. Has to be frustrating for Percussive to take home that seventh with the more aggressive strategy. But regardless, a solid night for Percussive. Eighth. We already mentioned Cameron Norton dropped out. He takes home ninth. Tenth place here at the Red Bull Ring goes to Rob Lemon Sr. who also dropped out. 11th and 12th were Thomas Geyer and Ataxia. That was the NASCAR GT Cup Series Round 10 from the Red Bull Ring. We hope you join us next week for the Australian Grand Prix at Mount Panorama.